This episode is brought to you by the Cloth Filter Company, who hand sew reusable coffee filters for all your favorite pour over and batch brew devices. Save trees, save money, make delicious coffee. I use them almost every day, so check the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford friends. Uh, Sara Al Ali, the host of our Middle East podcast, is joining me for the final episode of our Swapcast. Welcome back, Sara. Hello, Dee. We are, this is my favorite episode of our series. Uh, and also, this is the <clears throat> final episode of the podcast for 2022. For my podcast, yours is obviously going to continue happening. Um, but after this episode, we're going to be doing encore series of the most listened to series throughout this year. We're going to run them for the rest of the year and the first half of January next year. So this is kind of exciting that this is our last podcast for the year. I wouldn't have done it with anybody other than you. Um, Thank you. It's an honor. uh, The honor is all mine. Um, This has been a really interesting year for both of us, uh, particularly working on that. So the question I have for you is, what would you have done differently? Oh, okay. So uh, the first thing I would uh, be like work more on uh, learning about what's happening economically, socially Mm -hmm. uh, around me and uh, be more informed uh, about them. Um, Not on a, just on a, the local community, even globally. Mm -hmm. So uh, also, I might also think of um, reading more about economics, about politics, about uh, the coffee industry, the hospitality industry, Um, more education, let's say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I would have started this uh, earlier yep. than focusing just on coffee because coffee is not just coffee. It's like everything. <laughs> it's economy, it's politics, it's everything. So you need to be well informed in these different subjects. And um, maybe this is something that I'm trying to work on now. And... Uh, the podcast like the map it forward uh, podcast helped me a lot to (laughs) giving me like the key words to search for and um, what I should learn more about the world it's not just coffee thank you for saying this the reason I'm laughing is because I'm remembering the number of times that I would say to you Sara we've got to have a conversation about inflation and I could see like you roll your eyes going Lee (laughs) Is this really going to be relevant? Or I would say to you, we need to talk about the war in Ukraine. Or we need to talk. Do you remember how many times you'd be like, I just want to open my business. <laughs> I want to open my door. Lee, I just want to open a cafe. I, I don't really need to understand what's going to happen with the economy. And I don't need to understand this. And I don't need to understand that. And I would say to you, but Sada, you need to understand because in Ukraine, the, the price of fertilizers is going to impact the price of roasted, of, of green coffee and et cetera, et cetera. It was really wonderful to watch you go from somebody who didn't think that that stuff was important to then coming to our coaching session saying, okay, so I heard about this, that you talked about this on the podcast. Tell me more. It was, you started to, like, I watched you grow up as a business owner into the point where you started to realize like, okay, so Lee, I need to have conversations with my suppliers about how they're preparing for inflation and how they're preparing for uh, shortages. What are we going to do? And it was really wonderful for me to see you go from somebody who didn't think that this was important to somebody who realized things might have been different if I was more informed earlier. And now we've got to get onto this. It was really, really wonderful. Oh. So thanks for the the compliment of bearing with me <laughs> while I whipped you into shape about that <laughs> yeah because these uh, things are not easy to digest no. by and sometimes it's boring 
<laughs> right? The, the the economics and the politics, right? I don't 100%. think like it's it's 100%. nice to to know about it, but it's sometimes like very difficult to digest, and it gets to the point where you don't understand anything, so it's boring, <laughs> and uh, and it's too much like information, like. What should I do? Like learn about coffee and the terminology because mm. politics is another language, economics is another language. Yeah, so hundred percent, you have to learn it. And this is what I would have done differently. But that's why you get a coach, right? Or you get a consultant that's working with you on a monthly basis because it's my job to be informed about as much as I can be informed about. And I have, like, I work in seven different countries. I have to learn the geopolitics of what's going to be impacting those seven countries so that I can form my clients. Yeah. But like I want to be very clear, this stuff used to break my brain when I wasn't a consultant and I was just running my own business. I didn't have the capacity. When I was running Elixir Specialty Coffee, I did not have the capacity to do that and understand geopolitics. It was just too much. Yeah. But now it's my job to understand that stuff. So, yeah. What the other else thing, would you have done differently? Uh, uh, yeah. The other thing is that I would have uh, worked in a, given myself more time to experience what is it like to be not only a barista, but running a cafe mm-hmm. and uh, like... I might have uh, been in a cafe for like two years, working in a cafe for two years as a manager mm. uh, or a head barista to learn more. How is it like to be a head barista? How is it like to be a manager in a cafe? What does it involve? Which is also difficult for you in an emerging market, right? Like mm. anyone you're going to go and work for because you are the example right now you are one of the leading places uh to set the example for how cafes should be run in saudi but you had to figure that out from your own experience the cafes that have established around you were also learning on the go um so i'm gonna i'm gonna cut you some slack there the only way you could have done that is to get outside of saudi and and, and learn it somewhere else. So maybe that's something yeah. you could have done is go and be a barista in another country, mm-hmm. maybe, or, or run yeah. cafes in other countries. What yeah, else would you have uh, done yeah, differently? Like uh, with my like um, circumstances, uh, yeah, yeah, I can't. You're a mother. Like, uh, you yeah. Can't, yeah, yeah, you can't. It's very difficult. I can't just go and stay for two years outside and, <laughs> yeah, <No. laughs> be a barista. Yeah. What else would you have done differently? Um, I will be wiser in my connections, like building Mm. connections and uh, the people I want to be around me and the support system, which I said is a tip that you have to build a support system. And uh, maybe I would start coaching. Like you need someone to be your mentor early, like not just because you want to open a business, but... Everyone needs a, a coach, a mentor, mm. someone in their life that will sub- give support and will challenge direct them. them to challenge them and direct them to the blind spots. Yep, yep. And I want to add uh, something there. Given this is a swap cast, I'm going to add my own little. Uh, what would I have done differently? And the, and what I think that people should think about as well doing differently is be very very careful who you choose to go on this ride with you know leaning on that coaching thing that you're talking about make sure that the people that are going on this ride with you you're choosing them for the right reasons if you're choosing someone just because of the money they have it's not a good reason to choose someone whether it's someone who's going to be a silent investor whether it's someone who's going to be an active investor a lot of the time when you're someone like Sada or you're someone that's very well recognized that's doing something, a lot of the time uh, I have seen this again and again and again with people who I have coached, they choose people to go into business with 
because of who they are rather than all the other reasons you should be choosing to be in business. So choose your people very, very carefully. I definitely would have chosen some of my people differently, uh, but I got lucky along the way as well in choosing the right people at the right time. Yeah. So when it comes to when it comes to the pandemic, looking back at it, what do you think you could have done differently given there were external forces that were putting pressure on you? Uh, well, uh, it's hard to say this, but um, I would say I, w- I would never open the business. Yeah. It's not just, uh, it's not that I'm, um, what is the word, like trying to um, discourage people, but I would have stayed as a pop-up and managed the pop-up. And there are great opportunities now for pop-ups. Yeah, with all what's happening in Saudi, like uh, Riyadh season and other things, they need pop ups. So um, maybe I just I could have just stayed in the same model, business model as a pop up, and scale it up as a pop up. Right. So maybe open a second pop up. Exactly, and uh, offering this business, uh, this uh, service, it's. Um, yeah, honestly, this is the thing that I would have done differently. And it's the most difficult part is that, yeah, and is that I will just decide not to open the cafe. It, the burden at the time that you did it, like uh, I got to tell you as somebody <clears throat> who was there with you every day, and we were literally <clears throat> talking every day, most of what didn't go your way had nothing to do with you. Like you Mm -hmm. opened at perhaps the most difficult time in the history of cafes to open a cafe in a city that was emerging as a new market where the supply chain was falling over left, right and center. And you're expected to make, take the next leap in your journey, which would have gone very differently if there wasn't a pandemic and there wasn't all of this economic stuff going on around you. Like you're trying to open a luxury cafe at a time where consumers across the board, the rich people as well as the middle class are all experiencing price sensitivity. Yeah. You could never have predicted any of this. And, And it's fine to say, like looking back, this is what I could have done. But even back then looking forward, there was no way that any of us could have thought that this was going to be as hard as it was. Yeah. And I would encourage anybody that is resonating with what Sada is saying, please go easy on yourself. This has been a really tough few years for everybody in this industry. And I would say that the toughest years are still ahead of us for this industry get comfortable with the discomfort of what's coming with you know we're at really at the beginning of this economic stuff whatever it is I call it a tsunami we're really at the beginning of understanding what's going to happen be kind to yourself you'll know when it's time to close your cafe You'll know when it's time to downscale. You'll know when it's time to make some hard decisions. Just trust yourself. I have been in awe of Sarah, watching her as she had to make really difficult decisions. Because the things that she wanted to do with the cafe and the directions she wanted to go and the signals she was being sent by her consumers required Sarah to make some very difficult decisions choices about the direction that the business was going in she had to adapt and that was really hard for you right Sada yeah but but this kind of ties in together like all the things we didn't like we learned about ourselves and all the things that we would do differently and you know the challenges we expected and we didn't expect this has been a wild ride the last few years not just with this business but 
with the pandemic and with the economic situation that we're in and you have navigated this like a champ you really really have navigated it like a champ you should and everything did not go your way most things did not go your way and you couldn't have anticipated it and I couldn't be prouder of you I really couldn't it's uh, it's not only on the um, professional level even on personal level yeah things were going wrong and uh, I, I'm having obstacles on both levels all so, levels uh, all levels yeah and from different sides and like I wow like where should I fight from and it's like you're having punches coming to you from different uh people from different places and you don't know where to look and where you should be focused on and where you should like start punching back or you know or protecting yourself mm. from which side so um yeah it wasn't uh, it was really difficult and i think it's part of the journey like 100%. Uh, maybe if we were in a different uh period of time or different um it will be it will present with its own challenges 100 percent. i have a question we can't say it's gonna be wow yeah yeah did you know it was gonna be this hard Mm, on me no like i like i know it's hard as efforts time everything but i didn't know it's gonna hit me hard as sarah Mm. personally like deep in my soul so this is the thing that i never expected I'm going to ask you the question that I hate people asking me, but I'm going to ask you anyway. (laughs) Ask me. (laughs) Would you do it again? No. Yeah. And I always answer the same thing as what you just said. People say to me, oh, but Lee, like look at the really amazing life that you've led and the rich experiences that you've had and you've been in the music industry and you've been in the coffee industry and you've drag race cars and you've done this and you've done that. You know, look at what it's turned you into. It didn't have to be as hard as it was. Yeah. And that's the part that I would change. The the obstacles definitely teach you what you're made of. It brings you to the brink of like everything you thought you were capable of and then takes you far beyond that. And it's like too often you're left thinking, I don't think I can survive this. That's not... <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you remind me of, uh, I had a conversation with uh, one of my friends mm. and he was, well, he got it right. You know, he's he's uh, trying to explain or describe the uh, journey of an uh, entrepreneur. Mm. And he was saying, you know, when you're in a, you know, the moving sands? Yes. Like the desert. And he yes. say, it's like you are, you know, constantly trying to get up and yep. get on top of the sand and it keeps dragging Collapsing. you down and yep. you yeah and this is the constant state of just fighting 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 and you know it's it's um exhausting yeah because and it's you're there like in the middle of the desert and the sands are moving you either gonna drown or you have to keep you know, pushing surviving. and trying, surviving. So, and it's not like you just say, okay, I'm going to rest for two weeks and then I'll get back. No. And and this is why, like, people say to me, but, you know, like, are you saying that people shouldn't be entrepreneurs? People shouldn't open businesses? No, no, no. You should do it. Like, when I say <laughs> that this journey is going to teach you everything you never wanted to know about yourself... The second part of that statement is if you can cultivate cultivate enough grit to get comfortable with how uncomfortable this is going to be, you should do it anyway. But from what I've learned in my journey, the thing that I would change is I would have people around me that would champion me and support me in ways that I needed 
Like that's what I have now. I have a small handful of people around the world that I can pick up the phone and I can say, this shit is really hard today. And they can say, you know what? I know what that feels like. Talk to me. There's this culture out there in this hustle culture kind of environment a lot of the time if you don't have the right support network where people are just like, get over it. Like this is just what entrepreneurs' life is. We've got to get more supportive of each other. We've got to be there for each other. And that's what's exciting me about the things that are shifting and the things that I'm hearing from people who are listening to this podcast is like, hey, I want to conspire to the success of other people. And I want people to conspire to my success. And the big vision for Map It Forward, as you and I both know, being a part of Map It Forward is we want to create a a, a, an industry that builds responsible businesses that have responsible pricing models. That is like my dream come true because then we have a business and an industry that can sustain itself. In order for that to happen, we've got to have people working together. We will get there one day. Definitely. Inshallah. Inshallah. Sada, thank you very much. Thank you for being my last guest on my podcast and thank you for having me on your podcast. It's an honor. Um, If people want to find you, where can they find you on social media? On Instagram. Instagram's the best place. We'll have them uh, in the notes, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, And just from me, everyone, I just want to thank you for – the support that you've given Map It Forward this week. This has been our best year yet. Uh, We have now got 50,000 people a month that listen to this podcast, which is at the end of last year it was 20,000. So, I mean, that's a huge increase in one year Um, and I'm honoured that you listen to this podcast and that you are so engaged with the content Uh, although we don't hear from a lot of people very much, but that's the nature of podcasts. Um, Next year, our content theme is going to be about understanding the coffee consumer. And so what you can look forward to is having guests on the podcast that are going to talk about the coffee consumer, but we're also going to bring producers on the podcast a lot more next year so that we can – kind of connect that gap between the consumer and the producer and figure out how they can be uh, brought together closer in the supply chain. So we have some ideas of how that could happen and we're going to explore that next year on the podcast. Looking forward to it. Me too. Sada, good luck with the rest of this year with your podcast. Everyone tune in for the Onkaya episodes. And uh, Sada, can you sign off this this series for us peace love and peanut butter (laughs) have an amazing rest of your day everyone bye bye thanks for tuning in friends there are two ways you can support this podcast firstly become a paid member of our youtube channel secondly you can join our patreon for as little as three dollars a month don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information now this is what you should check out next